The next group in kingdom plantae is gymnosperms. So state unit characteristic of gymnosperms, for example, pinus species. So similar to pteridophytes, pinus bone vascular plants but with naked seed. So differences between gymnosperm and pteridophyte study adalah gymnosperm sudah ada seed, pteridophytes tak ada seed. The seed in gymnosperm is called naked seed. So kenapa kita panggil sebagai naked seed nanti kita tengok. So in terms of vascular tissue, the xylem only have trachea. So ingat sebelum ni xylem tissue ada dua, sama ada trachea ataupun vessel element. For gymnosperm, dia cuma ada tisu xylem trachea saja. Dia tak ada tisu vessel element. Tak ada. Next, for the phloem tissue, phloem pun sama, sama ada sieve tube ataupun companion cell. In gymnosperm, the phloem only contain sieve tube. Dia tak ada companion cell. So sieve tube sahaja ada, companion cell dia tak ada. Itu adalah unit karakteristik for gymnosperm in terms of vascular tissue. Previously in pteridophytes, the vascular tissue is only a simple vascular tissue. So dia ada water conducting tissue yang kita panggil sebagai xylem, lepas tu ada food product conducting tissue yang kita panggil sebagai phloem. Tapi both the xylem and phloem tak boleh define sama ada ada trachea ataupun vessel element sebab tissue tu terlampau simple tak ada further division tapi in gymnosperm the vascular tissue is a complex tissue that's why kita boleh specialize the xylem to have trachea and phloem to have sieve tube the next characteristic for gymnosperm is in terms of reproductive structure so the reproductive structure in gymnosperm is known as cone ataupun strobilus Ingat, gymnosperm adalah non-flowering plant. Plant yang tidak boleh produce flower. Tapi dia ada satu struktur lain kita panggil sebagai cone ataupun strobilus. So, cone or strobilus ada dua jenis. Sama ada male cone ataupun female cone. So, male cone nama lain dia adalah staminate cone ataupun microstrobilus that will produce microspores iaitu pollen grain. For the female, nama lain dia adalah ovulate cone ataupun megastrobilus that will produce megaspores. So, the megaspore will develop inside ovule tetapi ovule tersebut tak ada ovary. The ovule is not stored inside ovary. So, since there is no ovary, that's why the seed is called naked seed. Sebab seed itu memang terdedah. Dia tidak di-enclose, disimpan di dalam another structure yang kita panggil sebagai ovary. Tak ada. So, itulah reason kenapa gymnosperm, the seed is called naked seed. The megaspore inside the ovule will develop into egg, which is the female gametes. Pollen grain tadi akan produce sperm, which is the male gametes. So, kat sini kita nampak, since ada dua cone yang akan produce separate type of spore, microspore dekat male, megaspore dekat female, so technically genosperm are all heterosporous, tak ada yang homosporous. Next, unique to genosperm, the leaves is needle-like, nampak macam jarum sahaja, dia tak lebar. And on the surface of the needle-like leaves, they are very thick cuticle. Ada layer cuticle yang hydrophobic yang sangat tebal. Sama juga to prevent water loss. So dalam gambar ni kita nampak yang the first one, so this is the male cone. The second one is the female cone. So female cone ni yang awak biasa nampak. Basically, hiasan dekat pokok Christmas tu. So, itu adalah female cone. So, Christmas tree is a species of organism that belongs to group gymnosperms. Since there is no flowers, so in terms of pollinating agent, gymnosperms can be only pollinated by abiotic factors such as by winds or water. In addition, the seed of gymnosperm is without endosperms. So, dia tak produce triplot endosperms. 
So untuk gymnosperm there is no double fertilization. So kalau tak ada double fertilization tak adalah triploid endospermes. So kat sini kita nampak the female strobilus ataupun ovulate cone of pinus. So dekat dia punya reproductive structure ni akan ada scale. Kenapa kita panggil dia scale sebab dia adalah keras, woody scale. So woody scale ni sebenarnya datang daripada structure yang asalnya kita panggil sebagai sporophyll. So sporophyll tu adalah modified leaves that contain spore. So in this case it contain megaspore. So the megaspore is stored inside ovule. So kita nampak kat sini the ovule is not in and ovary. So kalau ovule tu tak ada dalam ovary, that's why dia akan form naked seed. So another unique characteristic of genus sperm is the sporophyte generation is the dominant generation than the gametophyte generation. So ni very similar to the pteridophytes, iaitu sporophyte yang dominant, gametophyte yang dependent. Sebab Sporophyte tu yang besar dan longer lifespan, gametophyte tu yang lebih kecil ataupun shorter lifespan. Gametophyte generation is very much reduced and dependent on the sporophyte generation for nutrition. The male gametophyte dipanggil sebagai pollen grain. The female gametophyte dipanggil sebagai female gametophyte. Dia tak ada specific name. Kita just panggil dia sebagai female gametophyte untuk gymnosperm. So kat sini kita nampak the structure of the female gametophyte yang berada di dalam ovule. So this is the ovule. So ni adalah view of the male and female cone under microscope. So for staminate cone ataupun male cone, dia pun ada sporophyll tapi kita panggil sebagai microsporophyll sebab dia produce microspore. So microspore will eventually form pollen grain iaitu male gametophyte. Untuk ovulate cone ataupun the female cone, so dekat dia punya megasporophyll sebab dia akan produce megaspore. So the megaspore can be found inside the ovules. So the megaspore will develop into the female gametophyte. The female gametophyte will produce egg. Okay, the last group in kingdom plantae is angiosperm. For example, hibiscus rosa sinensis. So hibiscus is the genus. Rosa sinensis is the species. For this species, awak kena garis dua-dua, hibiscus dan juga rosa sinensis. Kalau tadi, kita just letak SP. SP tu adalah singkatan kepada perkataan species. Sebab kita tak nak specific species apa. For angiosperm, ada satu saja hibiscus genus and then rosa sinensis is the only species. So, awak kena sebutlah species dia iaitu rosa sinensis. Okay, so kena ada dash eh, sebab rosa sinensis tu satu nama yang sama. Sebab tu satu garisan yang sama. Angiosperms are flowering plants. So the reproductive organ is the flower. So the organ will contain male parts, stamen ataupun female part iaitu pistil. So ni kita belajar dah dalam sem lepas, chapter reproduction. So the female parts, the pistil or the carpel ada stigma star ovary, the male parts iaitu stamen ada enter dan juga filament. So enter yang akan produce male gametophyte iaitu pollen grain, the ovary yang akan contain the female gametophyte iaitu embryo sac can be found inside the ovule. Next, in terms of vascular tissue, angiosperm have the most complex arrangement of vascular tissue iaitu xylem dia ada both tracheid and vessel element and the phloem contain sieve tube and companion cell. Next, the sporophyte generation is the dominant generation compared to the gametophyte generation. So ni sama je macam pteridophytes dan juga gymnosperm. Gametophyte generation is reduced and dependent on sporophyte generation for nutrition. So in terms of this particular characteristic, angiosperm is very similar to the gymnosperm. The male gametophyte is pollen grain, the female gametophyte is embryo sac. 
So embryosac adalah female gametophyte in angiosperm sebab embryosac yang akan produce egg. Okay, so special for angiosperm, they undergo double fertilization. So ingat lagi chapter production, ada proses double fertilization. So because of the double fertilization, the developing embryo can be found in a tissue known as endosperm, iaitu triploid endosperm function as energy storage ataupun food storage for the embryo so both of this is found inside the seed so seed tu datang daripada ovule fruits pula datang daripada ovary so asalkan awak nampak dia ada fruit maksudnya itu adalah plant yang daripada angiosperm so since the seed is enclosed in ovary so seed itu bukan naked seed Gymnosperm sahaja yang ada naked seed. The pollinating agent for angiosperm can be by biotic and abiotic factors. For example, by animals, insects, so itu biotic factor. Wind ataupun water, so itu adalah abiotic factor. Kenapa boleh by biotic factor untuk angiosperm? Sebab the female reproductive structure ada stigma. And ingat lagi stigma to produce nectar iaitu sugary material to attract insect untuk datang. So insect tu akan indirectly spread the pollen from flower to another flower. Kalau cone dekat gymnosperm dia tak produce benda ni. So dia tak akan attract insect untuk pollination. The last subtopic for kingdom planting is to describe the evolutionary relationship in kingdom planting starting from bryophytes up to angiosperm. So basically awak kena boleh describe apakah perkaitan karakteristik yang kita jumpa dalam bryophytes sampailah ke group angiosperms. So first from gametophyte generation that is dominant in bryophytes to sporophyte generation that is dominant for the rest of the group. Maksudnya starting from bryophytes tadi kita nampak dominant generation tu mula dengan gametophyte dahulu. Tapi sampai ke angiosperm dia dah berubah. Sporophyte tu yang dominant, gametophyte tu yang dependent. So next point, from gametophyte dependent sporophyte in bryophytes to independent sporophyte in the rest of the group. Maksudnya siapa bergantung kepada siapa for nutrition. Kalau bryophyte tadi, sporophyte tu yang dependent on the gametophyte. Tapi the rest of the group sampai ke angiosperm, gametophyte tu yang dependent kepada sporophyte untuk nutrition dan juga untuk water. Next, from absence of vascular tissue in bryophytes to presence of simple vascular tissue in pteridophytes and then complex vascular tissue in gymnosperm and angiosperm. Fourth, from motile sperm that needed water for fertilization in bryophytes and pteridophytes to non-motile which means they do not need water for fertilization in gymnosperm and angiosperm. The fifth point, from one type of spore ataupun homosporous in bryophytes and pteridophytes to two type of spore ataupun heterosporous in gymnosperm and angiosperms. Six, from absence of seed in bryophytes to presence of naked seed in gymnosperm and protected seed in angiosperm. 7. From free living gametophytes in bryophytes and pteridophytes to protected gametophyte within sporophyte in gymnosperm and angiosperms. Next, absence of fruit in bryophytes pteridophytes and gymnosperm to presence of fruit in angiosperms. Better adaptation to live on land from bryophytes to gymnosperms. So ni, point number 9 ni lebih kepada comparison between group algae bila kita compare dengan kingdom planting.
Next, from smaller size sporophyte in bryophyte to bigger size sporophyte in angiosperm. From non-photosynthetic sporophyte in bryophytes to photosynthetic sporophyte in angiosperm. And then lastly, from talus ataupun absence of true leaf stem and roots in bryophyte to presence of true leaf stems and roots in the rest of the group. So these are the evolutionary relationship in kingdom plantae starting from group bryophytes up to group angiosperms.